There's a crisis happening in Silicon Valley. As I speak, a trillion dollars in stock market value is being wiped away from the major tech players and AI startups in Silicon Valley. A lone ranger from the Far East named DeepSeek emerged as a new contender to fight ChatGPT, Google Gemini, and perplexity. It brought to the table un believable performance at one hundredth of the cost. What does this mean for AI and has the West already lost the AI wars? I'll go into some of the specifics into this video and help you plot some of the major milestones that has to happen but unfortunately, as the data suggests, it is going to take years, if not decades, for the West to catch up to the Chinese superiority in AI. This is the Sputnik moment for AI, as Mark Adderstein said over the weekend. So what's really happening here? Big tech is in an energy crisis. They're betting big on nuclear and data centers. So you have to understand the surge of data centers is immense. Just because you're using the internet and AI doesn't mean it's for free. Somebody's paying for the electricity. Sometimes they subsidize it through a lot of different ways. So Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Meta are racing to build data centers to house their AI. With electricity demands to increase in the US alone, by 15% by 2030. After decades of stagnation, a single data center uses as much electricity as 80,000 homes. By 2026, global data centers may use over 1,000 terawatts of energy annually, doubling since 2022. And that doubling is only going to continue, and that means AI is going to be competing for resources that us people, us plebs, use every single day. So that's a big concern. If energy costs are really high, it is not profitable in order to keep AI going. So what are these companies doing? For instance, Amazon is investing in a nuclear lifeline. Amazon is investing in X Energy, which are modular miniature nuclear reactors, which can generate about five gigawatts. And that, that's a lot, right? That's, that's a little village of electricity. By 2039, 2039, that is a long time for Amazon to catch up with its energy. Google has also partnered with Kiros Power to deploy these micro reactors by 2030, aiming for 500 megawatt hours. And that's a pretty big number, but you're still talking about a thousand houses there. And it's only going to increase if they can get these reactors on site quicker, cheaper, and faster. Now, if you look at Microsoft, they're rebooting Three Mile Island. Remember, the same Three Mile Island that had a meltdown a while back. And they're trying to gain an extra 835 megawatts, almost one gigawatt of electricity, which is what a nuclear power plant generates between one and two gigawatts. Now, what's Meta doing? They're looking to build a data center, which is going to be a chunk of Manhattan. They need four gigawatts of nuclear capacity for AI operation. That's two or three nuclear power plants. On average, it can take over a decade to build these nuclear installations safely and securely because of all the bureaucratic red tape. So how are they gonna achieve these milestones if the energy is not available and China has been outpacing the West in terms of energy production? So why nuclear? It comes down to reliability, it's carbon free, and it's 24 hour energy generation to offset some of the intermittent renewable technology. So China's energy dominance is really fueling a renaissance from creating fission reactors that make artificial suns to creating these AI behemoth companies. A little background on Deep Sync. They said it cost them $5.5 million to create this AI, and that is cheaper than what Sam Altman's supercar costs. Now, renewable energies is a big boon for China. If you haven't noticed, renewable prices and solar in particular have been going down. China added 300 gigawatts of wind and solar in 2024 alone. That is huge. They're also pushing the share of coal energy to record highs. Now, nuclear capacity is still small compared to the United States. However, it's 64 gigawatts by 2025 versus the 100 or so gigawatts in America with plans to increase it to 150 gigawatts by 2035. In 10 years, they're going to double their nuclear capacity. So the focus on new energy systems by offsetting wind, distributed solar, and these portable nuclear reactors are going to help these industrial zones. And they've already hit the critical mass with their manufacturing. They just need to tap into cheap energy. 
Also, you have to consider that China controls about 60 to 80 percent of the rare earth metals that's used in mining, refining, and high-tech electronics. And they also secure the supply chain and they can be a gatekeeper to these minerals that we need to have a new empowered and carbon-free economy. So some of their partnerships are growing, especially in Africa, the Congo, Namibia. They're locking down on lithium and cobalt access for energy reserves. So what else is happening in the West? Well, one of the most devastating blows was the EU's regulation of AI. It's really the only body that's regulating AI right now. This is going to stifle innovation, not only in AI startups in the EU, it's also going to stifle the access to these AI. The EU AI Act is a risk-based framework requiring transparency, bias audits, and human oversight in high risk, such as health and healthcare, so there isn't any sort of corruption or manipulation, which to a point is good, but you can have an AI that checks on the AI, right? Compliance costs for these small to medium-sized enterprises could be up to 30 million euro fines, or about 6% of their global revenue for violations. And that global revenue is more for the big multi-billion dollar a year conglomerates. This is going to slow the adoption and companies like OpenAI must retrofit models to EU standards delaying development, unless it's open source. You can just download it to your computer. There's no regulation there because it's software that anyone can manipulate and change. Now, some of the contrast is DeepSync's open source, low cost models thrive in a less regulated environment. They did this quickly with sophisticated engineers that really showed the world they have the chops, what it takes to innovate and lead the torch of progress by holding it for the rest of humanity going forward. Now, when you compare DeepSync R1, which is the latest and best flavor to OpenAI's performance, there's a couple of tasks here that I can tell you. In terms of math reasoning, it's about 97.3% out of 100. OpenAI is 96 out of four, so it's a little bit better on math. When it comes to coding, it's about a 49.2, when OpenAI's O1 model is about a 48 point now. So it's a little bit better at coding, but it's not replacing coders yet, but it can generate some great code. And problem solving, it's about 79.8 versus 79.2. So a lot of this is trained on Meta's Llama, which is open source, and they essentially used a couple API calls, they crawled the internet, and they made their own version with their own architecture because the DeepSync team had a bunch of GPUs that they use for mining, and when you're not using it for mining, they wanted to use it for data so they can monetize it because it's essentially it's hardware that's sitting there losing money. Now at their peak performance, it has 671 billion parameters. So that's just points of data. So that's a really big file with a lot of information. And it executes about 37 when it's activated per test. So it can narrow it down to the sections of the database that it really needs to plug in that data. And it uses enhanced mixture design to really deliver that to you in an informative and reinforced learning method. So there's human graders out there that is making sure that the integrity of this data is good, but we're getting to a point where the data is good and AI can actually go into a loop, which more or less is a approaching the singularity if we haven't already crossed that yet. Now, SAS models may start becoming obsolete. Maybe some of the big players can adapt and create their own AI, but DeepSync on average is a hundred times cheaper than OpenAI. And this would be the API calls that you can integrate into and plug into your apps. A hundred times cheaper than OpenAI. And just last week, ByteBands, the owner of TikTok, has a new model that's 200 times cheaper. And we're constantly seeing this trend accelerate. So for example, it's 55 cents for 1 million tokens. So that could be words, spaces, letters, math equations, and it's $15 per 1 million for OpenAI, 96% cheaper. You can also have free access via the web browser. You can go to DeepSync right now, start using it. It looks just like ChatGPT and it's free, no limits, no queries, and you can bypass the API fees by downloading it to your computer and running it locally and you can build your own API. All you have to do is keep that computer online. So you're talking about 10 orders of magnitude cheaper if you do this yourself. This is also open source for anybody that's worried that DeepSync is a Chinese PSYOP. It is MIT license model, which means you can customize it. You can go in there and you can dissect it and tune it to what you need it to be. This also reduces vendor lock-in so you're not dependent on a subscription fee or some sort of limits and tokens where you can actually control the model yourself. Now what's happening here with Silicon Valley? If a lot of these tech companies may start to struggle and find it harder 
hard to monetize, their marble offices, their six, seven figure salaries are no longer going to be viable. They're going to be meaningless. This is going to displace a lot of talent in terms of the tech side of things. Now, is this a decline of Silicon Valley? Their real estate market has already been in a major decline. They've been ridden with crime and now it's getting harder and harder to generate revenue with the high cost of energy when you have competitors that already have access to almost abundant energy. Energy limits versus open source freedoms. The Western AI innovation is hamstrung by energy scarcity, especially in the EU where energy is even more expensive and nuclear regulatory delays. These little nuclear reactors are going to take decades if not multiple decades to be implemented to help the infrastructure for AI to scale. And China is already state backed by their energy, which means China can subsidize the energy to near zero to help their companies compete in this global landscape. Now, what is this infrastructure really going to do? Is it going to create a new tech capital? in the world? Is Silicon Valley dethroned? Is the tech capital going, going to move to Beijing? Or is it going to be more optimistic, where open source leads to the decentralization of expertise in tech? Anybody with an AI model has a chance to succeed and thrive online? I like to believe in that model in particular. So DeepSync is a mirror of China's new policy. It mirrors the new three tech exports, solar, EVs, and batteries. Open source models like R1 let developers globally bypass Silicon Valley's paywall to get their solution in the hands of more customers, enabling businesses to cut costs and raise productivity. I think that's a boon for business if you can raise productivity and cut costs without having to make hard choices because you're locked into something that just doesn't work for your business. So is energy the currency of AI supremacy? The West's challenge is aging grids, slow nuclear adoption, Option and regulatory friction that is stalling AI. China's edge here is they're cheap, they have abundant energy, and they're open source. And their AI democratizes innovation for anybody that wants to adopt it. DeepSync is the Sputnik moment. Just like Sputnik triggered the space race, R1 signals a paradigm shift where energy abundance and open collaboration not proprietary SaaSes define the future. If you've liked this video and you believe the future of AI is now and you believe in an open source future that's driven by innovation and not by scrutiny and paywalls, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos as we track this story as it's just developing.